Welcome to CoreLogic's housing market update for March 2023. Last month, our National Home Value Index recorded a 0.1% decline, the smallest monthly drop since rates started rising in May last year, and the first time we saw the monthly pace of decline fall below 1% in seven months. A subtle 0.3% rise in Sydney dwelling values was the most significant driver of the national deceleration. However, the loss of Dower's momentum was broad-based. The stabilisation in housing values over the month lines up with consistently low advertised supply levels. The past four weeks have seen the flow of new capital city listings tracking 17% lower than a year ago and 11.9% below the previous five-year average. In fact, this trend towards a below average flow of new listings has been evident since September last year, coinciding with a loss of momentum in the rate of value decline. Auction clearance rates also bounced back through February, with the capital city weighted average reaching the high 60% range through the second half of the month, while Sydney clearance rates rose to above 70% through the middle of the month. The first time in a year, clearance rates have been this high. Whether this improving trend could be sustained is highly uncertain. While listings currently remain low, we could see housing demand dented further under higher interest rates and lower sentiment. Considering the RBA's move to a more hawkish stance at the February board meeting, along with an expectation for weaker economic performance and a loosening in labour markets, there's a good chance this reprieve in the housing downturn could be short-lived. We also have the fixed rate cliff ahead of us. Arguably, the full impact of the aggressive rate hiking cycle is yet to play out. Drilling into the data by value segment, it was the upper quartile of the combined capital city housing market that drove this month's stabilizing trend, increasing by 0.1% in February. Declines across the lower value segments of the market also stabilized, down to 0.1% across the lower quartile and 0.3% lower across the broad middle of the market. Upper quartile housing values have led this downturn to date, dropping 13.5% in value across the combined capital cities over the past 12 months, compared with a 1.7% rise in values across the lower quartile. Previous cycles have seen a similar trend where the upper quartile tends to lead both the upswing and the downturn. Regional dwelling values were down 0.3% in February compared with the 0.1% fall across the combined capital cities. Since peaking in June last year, the combined regionals index is down 7.7% compared with a 9.7% drop in the combined capital cities index, which peaked slightly earlier in April of 2022. Regional housing values remain 30.7% above levels recorded at the onset of COVID in March 2020, while the combined capitals index is 10.4% higher. Dwelling values remain higher than they were at the onset of COVID across every capital city and broad rest of state region. Melbourne now has the smallest value buffer, with housing values only 0.03% above March 2020 levels, followed by Sydney, where dwelling values remain 7.7% higher. At the other end of the spectrum is regional South Australia and Adelaide, where housing values surged through the upswing and have remained relatively resilient to value falls through the rate hiking cycle to date. While housing value growth has flattened, rental trends have diversified, with the highest rental appreciation now occurring firmly within the unit sector of the three largest capital cities, led by a 16.7% jump in Sydney unit rents over the past year. Although unit rents in the largest cities showed a period of weakness through the early phase of the pandemic, weekly rental values for units are now 19% higher than at the onset of COVID in Sydney, 10.4% higher across Melbourne, and 23.6% up in Brisbane. Several factors are likely to be contributing to the surge in unit rents. Rental affordability pressures may be forcing a transition of demand towards higher density rental options, where costs tend to be lower. Additionally, the strong rebound in foreign students and international migrant arrivals would be adding to rental demand, particularly around the inner city precincts, as well as areas within close proximity to universities and transport hubs. With vacancy rates remaining around record lows, it's likely rents will continue to rise, at least through the rest of the year. We aren't seeing much in the way of a rental supply response. The latest data on private sector investment activity is still trending lower, and new unit commencements continue to fall after holding below the decade average since late 2018. Additional federal funding for social and community housing isn't in the budget until 2024, and even then, that will take some time to deliver. 
Against this scenario of limited new rental supply, demand looks set to rise further based on the influx of overseas arrivals, amplified by an additional 35,000 permanent migrants relative to prior years. After consistently recording some of the weakest housing conditions in the country prior to the pandemic, Perth is now topping the league's tables as the most resilient capital city to falling values. Even though values are down 0.9% from a peak in July last year, the trend is best described as stable, with Perth home values actually 0.2% higher since April last year. The resilience to falls probably has something to do with the sheer affordability of Perth housing, where the median house value is on par with Darwin as the lowest of any capital city. Other factors keeping Perth values steady are a positive rate of interstate migration, extremely tight rental conditions, and a strong economy statewide. February's housing market performance suggested some renewed strength in market conditions. However, housing risks remain skewed to the downside, and it's probably too early to call a trough in the cycle, considering there are several factors which could trigger a reacceleration of housing value declines over the course of the year. The past month saw a more hawkish shift in messaging from the Reserve Bank. The monthly board minutes revealed a 50 basis point rate hike had been considered for February's decision. This was due to the perceived risk of persistently high inflation, along with wages and price data exceeding the Reserve Bank's expectations. Notably, after the February RBA board meeting, wage price data came in lower than market expectations. With more rate hikes expected over the near term, a further decline in borrowing capacity is on the cards, which is likely to weigh further on home sales. Most forecasters are now expecting the cash rate to peak at 4.1% between May and June. The news of more rate rises saw measures of consumer sentiment fall further. With consumer spirits around recessionary lows, high commitment decisions, such as buying or selling a home, are likely to be delayed for longer. Serviceability of existing home loans may be challenged this year. Low advertised stock levels are likely to persist as homeowners resist selling in a declining market. However, there may be a small portion of prospective vendors who become more motivated or have no choice but to sell their home amid growing challenges to serviceability. These challenges include an ongoing increase in interest rates, more borrowers being exposed to higher rates as the majority of fixed terms end, and rising unemployment along with a higher cost of living. Although mortgage arrears rates were moving through record lows last year, the portion of borrowers running behind in their repayments is likely to trend higher through 2023. Arguably, some pent-up supply has accrued while sellers remain on the sidelines. If the flow of new listings increases in the absence of a rise in buyer demand, we could see additional downwards pressure exerted on housing values. Longer term, the market is poised for recovery. Despite the headwinds accumulating for the housing market in 2023, there's no denying the fundamental undersupply of housing stock. This undersupply is mostly acute within Australia's rental market, with a strong return of overseas arrivals adding to aggregate housing demand. At the other end of the equation, approvals data suggests that supply is being constrained by higher interest rates and building costs. With the cash rate expected to stabilise around the middle of the year and potentially move lower in late 2023 or 2024, there could be a pickup in buyer demand as certainty improves and confidence lifts. Clearly, factors affecting the housing market are diverse, and they're likely to become more complex over the coming months as the market navigates more rate hikes, a surge in refinancing activity and weakening economic conditions. You can keep up to date with all the breaking news at corelogic.com.au or via CoreLogic Australia's LinkedIn page.